Hi, I'm Maggie. Thank you for stopping by Crafts the Charm today. You are most welcome here. One of my fondest memories from childhood was decorating eggs in the spring. But rather than do the traditional dipped eggs, I thought it would be fun to try to do something a little different. Maybe something that has a sort of a filigree look or a sort of Victorian look using plastic eggs, yarn, glue, and paint. Let's go have some fun. I purchased these plastic eggs from the Dollar Tree, but of course you can get plastic eggs anywhere. These are glossy, the larger ones. The smaller ones are less glossy, and so I think that that sort of finish works better for this project. I also have Just Yarn, which is from the Dollar Tree, and this white is just cotton. That's more like string. I'm using just regular white glue. Again, this is from the Dollar Tree. I'm mixing up a decoupage medium, which is two parts white glue to one part water. And you can see I've already decoupaged some of the yarn to the glossy egg, just to make sure that this will work. Now I'm going to cut different lengths of yarn because I have different sorts of designs that I want to try. For this orange egg, I'm going to try a penguin. I thought that a penguin that looks sort of like the ones in Mary Poppins went along well with our filigree theme. So to do this, you simply dip the yarn in the decoupage medium and then squeeze as much of that water and glue out of the yarn as you can, and then apply it to the egg in the pattern that you want. It is a little tricky, and the decoupage medium is sticky. So if you are working with people, maybe young people, maybe not young people, who don't enjoy that feeling or who have sensory issues, this may not be a part of the project they want to participate in. I'm doing sort of stylized curly wings there for my penguin, and then I set that aside to let it dry before I do more. Because it was difficult to get the yarn to stick to the glossy eggs, I thought I would try applying some decoupage medium directly to the egg and letting it dry a little bit to get sticky. I also found that a toothpick was helpful, particularly because your fingers do get sticky as you're working with this medium, and it is also helpful to wash them frequently. So for this purple egg, I thought I would try a sort of a monogram. Now I'm giving the penguin some little stylized feet. Now this is the Just Cotton, and until now I've been using the Just Yarn and I wasn't sure which one might work better. The Just Cotton is made up of separate fibers that aren't twisted together particularly well, or particularly tightly, as the yarn is. So when I tried to apply it to the egg, those strands separated and some of them stuck to my fingers and none of them really stuck to the egg, so I gave up with trying to work with that. The yarn definitely worked better. But because it was difficult to adhere the yarn to the egg, I thought I'd try some different techniques to give the eggs more texture. So that first one was actually just a sheet of bathroom tissue. And this is some homemade chalk paint or baking soda paint where I've mixed baking soda with acrylic paint and applied that to some eggs and I'm going to let those things dry for a good 24 hours. And now that they've dried, I've got two eggs that are chalk painted and three eggs with the tissue on them. And I just trimmed that off because it did get a little lumpy. It was very thin and difficult to apply. 
also trimming off some yarn bits from some of those eggs. Now I had saved my decoupage medium. So I just continued with the same mixture and I had a much easier time applying the yarn to the eggs. But how much of that we can attribute to the texture that's applied to the eggs and how much maybe we should attribute to some evaporation of the decoupage medium, I'm not sure. It did feel like it was a little less wet when I was working with it here. And for some reason, I always do that two to one ratio. And maybe that works with other white glue, or maybe that ratio just is a little bit off, but I probably should put in a little less water to start. But you can see that the yarn is sticking really well to the eggs. So once those had all dried, and again, give it about 24 hours, I used skewers to stick the eggs into this cardboard box. And you can see that eggs now come with holes in the bottom. I don't remember them ever having holes in the bottom in the past. I didn't need them quite that high, so I cut those skewers in half, and the skewers without the points were a little too thick, so I shaved down one end so that I could skewer the eggs so that they could dry. And again, I'm mixing up that baking soda chalk paint. I think that if you want to make chalk paint, the better method is probably to use plaster of Paris, but I didn't have any. And I did have baking soda, and I think most people do have that in their home. And I think the texture is actually pretty good. I don't know how well it would hold up over time. So if you are going to keep these eggs, then I would recommend applying some sort of finish like a spray varnish or maybe even Mod Podge. So here they all are and they've all been completely covered in one coat of chalk paint or baking soda chalk paint. And this is a burnt umber brown and I mixed up a tan color. Now I like this color. My intention was always to paint these eggs black and white but I did want to show some alternatives. So I painted over the raised parts, the yarn parts, and then I did just a little dry brushing on the other parts. These paints, and I apologize for the blurriness, are some, I thought, spring colors. The Ceram coats I got at Target. I'm not sure where I got this one, the Craft Smart. And I really liked that blue. And I just wanted to show some alternatives here, like maybe you could paint the eggs in some spring colors. Now, I love that blue, but I hate the way it looks on the egg. I think it's awful. And so I could not pull this off, but maybe you could. And that's what that looks like. Now the penguin, of course, he has to be black. And here's some acrylic black paint. And again, we'll just use that over the raised parts that were the yarn. And then I thought to dry brush some black over the parts where a penguin would be black. And um, again, I hate the way that looks. So if you have su suggestions for me, I'd love to hear them. Now here are the eggs, now that they've all been painted with black, and I even went over that blue one because I thought that was so awful, and I also went over my tan one, but I liked the tan that I had dry brushed onto the flatter surface of the egg, so I mixed up some more tan and dry brushed that onto the other eggs. Maybe the penguin would have looked better like that too. And I thought it looked sort of like plaster, so I liked that look. My goal here was to have a family egg decorating activity, and I thought that that was difficult enough or frustrating enough that it may not work for people of all ages. But I think anybody could decoupage tissue paper onto an egg. And you can also use this drawer liner. It's a nonstick drawer liner that I got at the Dollar Tree or nonstick pad 
to put designs on. So I wanted to see if that would decoupage onto the eggs. So I used this gold paper and white paper, and again I mixed up two parts glue to one part water. And it's very easy to decoupage the tissue paper on it. In fact, I did some with just ripped bits, which I think works better than just the one sheet. And I was able to easily decoupage that nonstick drawer liner onto the eggs. So that is an option, but again, you have to not mind the feeling of the decoupage medium on your fingers. So my final attempt at a family oriented egg decorating technique is to mix up some chalk paint again. And there's no ratio here that I'm using. I'm just mixing it in until I like the texture. And I think that's something any family member could enjoy is mixing up the paint. And then painting the eggs, particularly if you open them up like this, or even put them down on the table like I'm doing here, is also something that I think anybody could do. So you don't have to touch anything, although you can see I have some paint on my hands. You could be more careful. You don't have to touch anything to do that. Now, this second painting, now that they've got a good coat on them, is to give them some texture using that rubbery drawer liner. And you could use anything here because I'm basically using it as a stencil. So I think this gives the eggs kind of an interesting texture, but you could probably put patterns on the eggs using just a traditional stencil or something else with a cutout in it. You could use, I guess, a hole punch with a, you know, a shaped hole punch or, or a round hole punch and punch out some cardstock or paper and use that as a stencil. So basically I'm just putting this over the egg and then using a brush. So again, you don't have to touch anything that has a texture you might not like and doing some sort of, I don't know, hybrid of a, a traditional stenciling dab and painting to try to get that textured paint through the drawer liner. and you can see the result. So it does give a texture. Now I tried some different colors as well and I didn't really like them and I really hoped that the black would look good but I did not think that it did. I tried both using, that is a, a mixture of chalk paint for the black and I tried both dry brushing over the white texture and I tried using the, the drawer liner as a stencil and I didn't like either technique with the black. Now this is a basket that I got from the Dollar Tree and I had originally thought I might try to decorate this basket and put the eggs in it. So first I was just sort of seeing how much they filled the basket and I've got this black velvet material which I put in the basket. and. The gold, I liked the gold tissue paper more before I decoupaged it. The decoupage medium ended up giving it a sort of a greenish tinge, which I didn't like. And I did put actually a, a little bit of gold leaf on top, but it didn't help. I did like the gold as a contrast with the black and white eggs though. But in the end, I just stayed with the black and white and the white textured eggs. And I liked the way they looked. Here they are on some moss. I thought that the filigree eggs came out pretty well. I was hoping that I could make this a project that would be very easy for people of all ages to participate in, and I'm not sure I was successful in that respect. If you created these eggs, I'd love to know about it, especially if you had any variations, and especially if you had variations that worked well for people of all ages. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to Crafts the Charm. There will be more seasonal decor projects. Thank you for spending time with me today. Take care.